Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, a crowd-driven, crowd-supported feature in which we respond to your questions and comments on everything from political philosophy to culture to geopolitics, all the things that matter to us in our common life as citizens. And today's comment comes from Cervico 100, responding to my endorsement of a voucher system and an essentially private, though government-funded, education system. And he or she says, how can we ensure that as a result of their education, my child is able to communicate with your child? And this is an excellent question because it comes to the role of the education system, public or private, in promoting social cohesion rather than strictly literacy, mathematical skills, and that sort of thing. And it will not do to brush this aside. It's a very important question. The first thing I want to say is to assume that a state system will necessarily guarantee this and to compare an idealized public system with an actual private system, warts and all, is to commit a major mistake. It is true that if you have a private educational system, it will be more decentralized, there will be more variety, and there will be schools teaching different kinds of values. Theoretically, a public system will be homogenous in what it teaches and how it teaches it, but we know this is not true. We know that schools in certain neighborhoods are much better than schools in other neighborhoods. We know that schools with good leadership do a much better job with the children than schools with bad leadership. We know that public school systems are able to swallow enormous amounts of money and deliver terrible results when it comes to the three R's. And there's no reason to suppose, and much reason to dispute, that they're doing a far better job when it comes to promoting cohesion, especially because they tend to get captured by trendy ideologies, including this radical diversity and multiculturalism that now dominates the political and academic heights, in which it would be wrong to give children a common understanding of their history or to suggest that they ought to be able to understand one another across barriers. I mean, you see this kind of ruckus about, oh, well, we can't have a play about Aboriginals or we can't have a play about Blacks that doesn't have Aboriginal or Black actors because only Aboriginals and Blacks can understand Aboriginals and Blacks respectively. But if that's the case, there's no point in having white people in the audience or indeed, you know, Orientals or anybody else. We can only understand our own narrow tribe and the whole thing falls apart. Well, the school system tends to teach that especially the public school system, because that's the sort of thing that educators are more keen on than parents. It's, you know, parents of immigrants, they've chosen Canada, they mostly want to be Canadian. And that brings me to the second point, which I think is the most critical point. It isn't really the education system that guarantees that your child can communicate with my child. Even when it comes to teaching them languages, that very basic part of communication, what they learn in the home matters more than what they learn in the school. When it comes to values, that is far more true. You could have the schools preaching love and tolerance. If the parents are spewing hate at the dinner table, the kids are either going to come out haters or they're going to have to engage in a massive act of rebellion against their parents that's far more difficult than rebelling against your teachers. It's up to us to create that social cohesion, to talk intelligently to our children about, for instance, the question of what we should think about Sir John A. Macdonald who has enormous achievements to his name, but also is tainted by some of the bigoted attitudes of the 19th century. And to look them in the eye and say, can we honestly say for sure that if we'd been there, we'd have known better? We can learn humility from these discussions. But the critical thing is that they have to happen around the dinner table. Just as parents must take an interest in their child's education, if it's to be much good. I know there are such dysfunctional homes that for some a sad minority of kids, school is a refuge, and that good teacher gives them an inspiration they were denied actively at home. But for the most part, as Barbara Bush said, you know, what happens in your house is more important than what happens in the White House. What happens in your house is more important than what happens in the schoolhouse. And if we are good parents, then in receiving vouchers and sending our kids to a private but government-funded system driven by parental wishes, we will insist on accommodation. We will insist on toleration. We will insist upon a multicultural education. If we're not that kind of people, if we're a bunch of mean-spirited, narrow-minded bigots, we're not going to elect politicians who will then hire educators who will give our kids the kind of education we're actively denying them in the house. You know, it's like the old story, we need governments to defend human rights because the citizens are a bunch of nasty bigots. Well, if we are, why would we elect broad-minded politicians? Now, in any education system, including a voucher system, there is a need for governments to certify quality, to make sure that the children are getting an education. And that doesn't just mean literacy. It means keeping some kind of eye on the values that are taught and denying certification to schools that are actively promoting hatred. 
I'm reluctant to have the state act in loco parentis, but there are cases where it has to happen, as with parents who beat their children, parents who don't educate their children, parents who starve their children, and parents who feed their children a steady diet of racial or other hatred. But don't think that the public school promotes cohesion in a way that the private school either can't do or won't do, given that it's parent-driven. If you're enjoying Ask the Professor, I remind you, it's crowd-driven. We need your questions and comments, and here's the URL to submit them. And I need your financial support. So if you value this and my other work, click here, go to my webpage, and become a one-time or monthly sponsor. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.